we proceed with our study of uh, um, shrinkage methods by introducing a, a second technique that goes under the name of the lasso. Okay, allora, let, let's uh, start from uh, a, a drawback of ridge regression uh, if we compare it with subset selection. While sub subset selection is going to choose uh, among uh, uh, amongst the variables, so in the end uh, it will provide you with a simpler model where just the relevant uh, predictors are left, uh, we have seen that the coefficients that you find by ridge regression are uh, uh, always different from zero. They, they can become very small when you increase, uh, when you increase the shrinking, but uh, they never truly go to zero. And therefore, you will have all the p predictors in the final model. So, there is uh, an alternative, this is called the lasso, which is relatively recent, so it traces back uh, to the, the, the end of the, of the last century, uh, that overcomes this disadvantage. Let, let, let's see how it works. So, the idea is, uh, uh, again, to have uh, a shrinkage penalty in the, in the cost function that you want to minimize, and uh, you, here you see you have the usual uh, residual sum of squares, and uh, here you have uh, the shrinkage uh, coefficient and instead of having the sum of squared coefficients we have the sum of their absolute values okay so uh, can also be written this way rss rss plus lambda and here the sum of the absolute values uh, mathematically speaking uh, this is called an l1 penalty, while the penalty used in the ridge regression is an L2 one. Okay, uh, this is because the L2 norm of a vector is defined in this way, so as the sum of the absolute values of, <coughs> of its entries. Okay, excuse me. Okay, let's go on. Uh, what's the effect? Of the shrinking penalty, just as with ridge regression, you will have a shrinking of the coefficients, but differently from ridge regression, now we will uh, discover that uh, uh, the penalty uh, can force some of the coefficients to become uh, exactly equal to zero. And uh, you know, when uh, a coefficient is equal to zero, it disappears from the model. So uh, this uh, suggests that uh, you should discard this coefficient and therefore this is a shrinkage strategy that is going to perform also variable selection. And the idea is that with a sufficiently large lambda, uh, such that the shrinking is uh, quite strong or strong enough, then you are going to uh, zero a number of parameters and uh, in the end you obtain what's called a sparse model. A sparse model is a model uh, in which when you start uh, from many variables uh, you end uh, with uh, a very limited uh, subset of these variables, so you succeeded in reducing the complexity and keeping just the variables that are more, more important. Of course, this is going to work only if uh, you are able to select a good value for the shrinking coefficient, for also called the regularization parameter. And uh, uh, as we will see, a general purpose method is uh, again uh, uh, cross-validation, which is quite general. Uh, there is uh, a, an issue with other methods that we have introduced as Mallow's CP, uh, the archaic information criterion, uh, the issue is that uh, they use the degrees of freedom of the model. While the degrees of freedom in a subset selection method are easily uh, found, because just the number of parameters, when you are resorting to shrinking uh, approaches, the definition of the degrees of freedom is less obvious. For instance, when you are using ridge regression, it would seem that uh, uh, the, the, the degrees of freedom is equal to the number of or the total number of the 
the predictors because none of them is actually none of, of these coefficients is actually equal to zero. But as a matter of fact, it can be found that the 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 the, the, the effective degrees of freedom are are, are are less than that. Okay, and so if we are going to use uh, Malus, CP, uh, Akaiki, uh, BAC, you have to discuss uh, how the notion of degrees of freedom could be uh, extended to uh, this uh, class uh, of estimators. This can be done, but uh, you, you have uh, a practical alternative uh, that skips the problem, and this alternative is uh, cross uh, cross validation, of course. Uh, let's see how the lasso works on the credit data set. Okay, here we have the two plots that we, we, we already seen, and uh, here, as you see, you have the coefficients. In this plot, when you fix a value of lambda and you draw a vertical line, you just find the values of all the, the parameters. So the, the, the black value is uh, the parameter for income, the, 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 the yellow one is for student status, the blue one for rating, and the red one for the limit on the credit card. Okay, and uh, here it is really interesting because you can see that as lambda increases, uh, there are these uh, coefficients that uh, were already not so important uh, in, in, in the ridge estimate, but uh, at the beginning they are small, but after center point they become perfectly zero, so they disappear from the model. So they, they, they are just discarded from the model. And then you go on, you can see that at some point also uh, the income coefficients becomes perfectly equal to zero. Then uh, it's the turn of limit uh, and student, and so on. So here you can see that uh, you can, uh, uh, depending on the choice of lambda, uh, find a, a model with very few parameters. So this is really a, a feature selection uh, capability that, uh, it is, it, that is offered by, by the lasso. Uh, here it is the same plot uh, the other way around. So uh, now 1.0 means that you are uh, uh, equivalent to standard least squares. And you move left, moving left corresponds to increasing the shrinkage. And uh, okay, you can see that these parameters are going to disappear, they become zero, then the black one, and, and so on. Okay, so really power powerful. Okay, and uh, it's natural to ask why uh, the lasso enjoys this variable selection property that is not enjoyed by uh, ridge uh, by ridge regression so this is a, a quite a, a, a natural question and uh, to see this uh, we have to reformulate uh, the, the problem in a slightly different uh, way and uh, we can show it and this reformulation holds for both ridge regression and, and the lasso okay so we can show that the, ori the original problems for the ridge regression for the ridge regression and for the lasso are uh, um, equivalent to these new problems. And here you can see that we are back to the usual problem of minimizing RSS, the residual sum of squares, but the difference is that there is a constraint and this S is called a budget. So the idea is that I still want to minimize the residuals and I measure this by the sum of squared residuals. But I can just spend a limited budget. And uh, I define the budget in a different way for the lasso here. So here the, the budget is defined as uh, the sum of the absolute values uh, of the coefficients. And for ridge regression, instead, the budget is defined as the sum of the squared values of the coefficients. Okay, so the idea, uh, can you make uh, RSS as small as possible, but without exceeding uh, your budget? So this is uh, the formulation. Apparently, this seems a different problem from, uh, from the, 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 the one that we uh, used uh, to introduce uh, the, the, the lasso here. This, is, uh, this refers to the lasso, and uh, this refers to the 
rigid regression, but uh, you can show that uh, uh, this is a completely equivalent uh, formulation. And you, you, you can prove by, by contradiction, for instance, the idea is that uh, if you have sold uh, the, the lasso, uh, then uh, once you have found the solution for a certain value of lambda, of course, you can compute uh, your budget. You just uh, compute the sum of the absolute values uh, of the coefficients. And so you, for, for your lambda, you, you, you get uh, a, a, a budget. Then uh, you can write uh, this new problem where there is no lambda, but you, you, you are using the, the budget you have found before. And so you, you, you just ask for a, a vector of a vector beta uh, that is within the budget and minimizes uh, this cost function. Then you, you, you can see that you are going to find exactly the same beta vector that uh, minimized the original problem with the shrinkage penalty uh, using lambda. So you solve the problem with the shrinkage penalty for a certain lambda. You find the solution. Given the solution, you compute the budget, that is just the sum of the absolute values of the beta j. Okay, and then you write this new problem, and you try to solve it uh, staying within the budget. You, you, you can prove, it's not difficult, that uh, uh, the solution, the optimal solution to this problem uh, will, pro will, uh, will be found in correspondence of the same beta vector that solved the, 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 the regularized problem with the shrinkage, uh, with the shrinkage panel. So these are equivalent ways of formulating the problem. But this is uh, uh, well suited to uh, explain why uh, the, the lasso has uh, this variable, this nice variable selection property. Okay, and this is explained here. So here I have two pictures. The one on the left refers to the lasso. The one on the right refers to uh, ridge regression. And uh, the idea is that uh, beta hat is the standard least squared solution. So if you are trying to minimize RSS, RSS, uh, here is a simple problem where you just have uh, uh, Two, uh, two coefficients, beta 1 and beta 2. We are not considering the intercept. Okay, so we have just two coefficients, and when you try to find the least square solution, this is equivalent to minimizing a function of these two coefficients, uh, that is a surface. And uh, uh, if uh, the problem is well behaved, so if some identifiability condition is satisfied, uh, the, 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 the surface is a kind of cap is a kind of cap, these are the level lines of the cap, and there is a minimum point. So this is the, the solution that you will find by uh, standard least squares, which is, a, which is at the bottom of the cap. All right. But now we want to solve, to minimize the, the, the level of this cap. We, we want to be as low as possible in this cap by complying with the budget constraint. And these, these regions uh, are the regions where the budget is satisfied for the lasso and the budget is satisfied for ridge regression. Because if you consider the sum of the absolute values, and this is the, 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 the budget that you are using for the lasso, uh, when you say that the sum of the absolute values of beta 1 and beta 2 is less, less than s, this amounts to saying that you have to stay inside a region of this type. So the point is you would like to minimize this surface. Its minimum is here, but you cannot take the minimum here because it's outside your budget region. And so in some sense you have to find in your budget the point uh, that minimizes, that, that lies on the lowest level line of your cap. Okay. And of course, this is the point. So this point is the point within the budget region that has the lowest possible value for the red surface. Very similar here. Okay, this is the budget region. 
I want to find the point that is within the region but uh, is uh, also uh, at the lowest possible uh, uh, level of the red surface and these are the uh, level lines of the of the RSS surface the residual sum of squares as a function of beta 1 and beta 2 and this is the point you can see that here everything is differentiable here instead you you have these points where uh, the, the 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 border is not differentiable okay but here everything is differentiable so that this point uh, is found uh, with a, a, a tangent condition so here this is a tangency between uh, the, these level line the, the level lines uh, of rss uh, and the border of the budget region here instead uh, you 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 have these uh, discontinuities and in view of these discontinuities you can see that uh, you are most likely to have that one of the betas is equal to zero so if the point is here you can see that here beta one is equal to zero instead here the contact point between the level lines and the budget region uh, except for special cases will be placed in correspondence of points where both beta beta 1 and beta 2 are different from zero so the the the, the feature selection property of, of the lasso depends on the shape of the budget region uh, here we have shown what happens in two dimensions you sh you should imagine that this has been too generalized to a large number of variables, but uh, the, the rationale will remain the same. And this explains this nice property of the lasso. Uh, next, uh, we compare lasso and ridge regression. Can we say that one of the two is, uh, is better? Uh, let's see. This is a, a, a first uh, problem. Uh, this, these are simulated, uh, simulated data. Okay. And uh, again, uh, the meaning of the curves is the usual one. So uh, black is the squared bias, uh, green is the variance, and uh, uh, the, the test mean squared error is uh, the purple one. And uh, okay, here it depends on lambda, okay, and uh, I'm using the lasso. So this is the lasso, or, or is the lambda the lambda coefficient for the lasso uh, on the right plot i'm comparing the lasso and the ridge regression and uh, the dotted uh, lines refer the dashed line or dotted lines uh, refer to the ridge and you can see that here the ridge is doing uh, slightly better as a matter of fact uh, how can you see this you can see because the point where you have the minimal mean squared error on test data for the lasso you have is here where the cross is plotted you can see that you you can do a bit better if you are using ridge regression is this a surprise uh, not very much because uh, in this simulated problem uh, there, w there were uh, a lot of variables that uh, in, in a in the real model were different from zero so uh, if you are using the lasso you are forcing some of them to to, to become zero but uh, the ground truth is that uh, there are very few that are actually equal to zero okay so quite natural that ridge regression is, is doing better and here there is a trick uh, because i need to compare the two methods on the same plot and I cannot use lambda for both. Here I have lambda, but this plot, you can only see what happens to the lasso. I should not plot what happens for, uh, for ridge regression because the meaning of the two lambdas would be different. So I, I cannot plot uh, on the same figure uh, the, the, the curves for lasso and ridge regression with the unique lambda. So in order to uh, solve uh, this problem, here we use a different x-axis and the x-axis is the R squared on training data. So you have uh, uh, zero R squared on, 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 the, on the training data, meaning that you are regularizing a lot. And 
um, you have uh, uh, sorry uh, okay r squared okay zero you are regularizing a lot and one you have r squared equal to one when the residuals are equal to zero and this means that you have uh, the usual uh, uh, standard least square so here you have standard least squares okay and the, when you move to the left you are uh, uh, giving more and more weight uh, uh, to, to shrinking, so you are increasing the value of lambda for both the lasso and uh, uh, ridge regression. But since the lambdas are different, I, 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 I rather uh, use uh, as, a, as a reference the R squared that is achieved on uh, the training data. And this makes the two methods comparable. But actually, I see that uh, ridge regression can do, uh, can do a bit better. Uh, let's see another comparison. Okay, this is another comparison, and uh, in uh, in in this comparison, uh, instead uh, it is the lasso that is doing better. So uh, here again, uh, I have the plots uh, of the b squared bias black, uh, variance green, and uh, mean squared error on test data um, purple. And here I have the comparison with the same criterion as before. I, I'm using R squared on the training data as a common uh, uh, x-axis for the two methods. And now I can see that uh, the mean squared error for uh, uh, the ridge regression is this dotted, uh, dotted line. And it is above uh, the one that I can achieve uh, with, uh, with the lasso. Uh, is this a surprise? No, because this is another simulated problem, and in this problem there were only uh, two uh, coefficients uh, that were different uh, from zero in the true model, uh, and therefore the lasso did its job, uh, that is, selected the real important coefficients, discarding the other ones. So there is no uh, a bulletproof method that uh, is good for all purposes, but uh, depending, on, depending on the specific problem, you should use uh, the, 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 the better method. So you can see here, this is the mean squared error for the lasso, and the dotted purple line is a mean squared error for uh, the region. You can see that the lasso does a better job because you, you get a smaller mean squared error. Okay, some conclusions. Uh, so, uh, no, none of the two methods is going to dominate the other. Uh, of course, you should prefer the lasso when you expect that uh, the response depends only on few variables. Uh, but this is something uh, uh, that you don't know in, in, in a real world uh, situation. Uh, and the important uh, issue uh, is uh, the selection, uh, the tuning of the lambda parameter. But uh, this is something that can be done by a general purpose method like uh, cross, uh, cross validation. And uh, in, in, uh, in this way, uh, by cross-validation, you could also perform a comparison between the two methods because uh, you will get an estimate uh, of the, the test error and therefore you could choose uh, between uh, lasso and ridge regression uh, the method that gives you the best estimate of the test error uh, obtained by cross-validation or careful cross-validation. And, and this is the last uh, uh, topic uh, of the lecture, uh, that is the selection of the tuning parameter for uh, these two shrinking uh, shrinking methods. Um, okay, we have seen that we need a method for selecting lambda, or if we like to uh, adopt the budget notion. So we have seen that we have an equivalent formulation where rather than selecting lambda, we decide the budget that we have in terms of the sum of the absolute values of the coefficients or in terms of the sum of the squared uh, values of the coefficients. And uh, a general purpose method is a cross validation. In this case, you will go, you will uh, uh, select a grid of lambda values and you repeat the computation or you repeat the training of the model and then the computation of the cross validation error rate uh, for each value of, of, of lambda. And uh, you, you just plot a curve 
uh, that shows uh, the estimates of the test error depending on lambda, and then you will select the lambda uh, for which the cross-validation error is, uh, is, uh, is smallest. When you have chosen uh, your value of lambda, of course, uh, it is convenient that you uh, use all the valuable data and you make a final estimation uh, using the, the selected uh, lambda that you have found before. Let's see the credit data example. Okay, this is done by 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 region regression. Okay, and uh, here I have. Uh, the cross validation error this is estimated uh, uh, i had a look at the book uh, by uh, leave one out cross validation if i remember correctly and you can see that as you increase lambda uh, this is quite flat but uh, there is a decrease at some point you get a minimum and then the estimate of the cross validation error goes up so the best choice uh, seems to be this one here you can see what's going to happen to your uh, standardized coefficients and uh, you can see that you have a lot of coefficients close to zero and you can see that they, they never become exactly equal to zero so there is no feature selection property for, for the for ridge regression uh, as we know and this is what happens for the other for the other coefficients so here the shrinking is not uh, very 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 strong okay and uh, the, okay the optimal value of lambda is uh, uh, denoted by the dotted vertical vertical line. Okay, uh, let let's see what happens uh, for 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 the lasso. This is another data set. This is a, a sparse uh, uh, simulated data set, meaning that uh, uh, there are just few predictors uh, that are actually uh, included in the true model. So most predictors are, are not relevant and uh, a good method should be able to recognize this fact. And uh, here we have the plots. Here we have plotted everything um, using as uh, uh, x-axis the ratio between the L1 norm of the lasso estimate and the L1 norm of the standard least squares estimate. And here you have the cross-validation error, and on the right plot you have the standardized coefficients. And here you can see that there is a quite clear minimum. Okay, and so you are going to choose this one. And this is what happens uh, to your coefficients. You can see that you have a, a lot of coefficients. So uh, this is a case where you did not have so many data, but the number of coefficients was quite close uh, to, to, to the number of data. And you can see that as you increase shrinking, all these coefficients are going to collapse to zero. Okay, so in the end, only two coefficients are left, and in this simulated problem, as a matter of fact, the true model included just two predictors. So uh, the lasso does, uh, does its job and provides you with uh, a sensible solution that you will find in correspondence of the vertical dotted line, which is just the same as this one. And you can see that the vertical dotted line is not far away from the, 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 the point where all the, uh, the, useless, the useless predictors were put uh, to zero. Okay, so this is all for, for today. And we have concluded our discussion of uh, shrinking methods.